Cancer, of course, is a very fearsome disease, and uh, one can't be too arrogant in the face of uh, this uh, fearsome, fearsome medical foe. That said, I've been fortunate enough to practice medicine at a time where I've seen evidence that various types of cancer certainly can be reversed, and I give my colleagues in pharmaceutical medicine great credit uh, for agents that have been involved, especially in the treatment of childhood leukemia and lymphomas. It's such a, a comforting, miraculous state that we're in because when I started medicine in the 60s, a little child got chronic myelogenous leukemia or some other blood dyscrasia like that. Their days were numbered and it was just so sad to watch these children die. And now we can offer these children great hope. Uh, most of these leukemias are now curable. And to even use that word, the same sentence with leukemia, uh, is a real tribute to, uh, to our colleagues in pharmaceutical medicine. That said, however, childhood leukemias are a relatively small fraction of the malignant disease that Americans have to deal with, far more common. Uh, is uh, breast cancer, uh, prostate cancer, lung cancer. And those are the three uh, most common cancers along with colon cancer. Lung cancer, of course, the majority is from smoking and uh, whether that's reversible or not, uh, it's certainly preventable and no one should be inhaling hot smoke into their lungs for any reason. But when it comes to these other cancers, certainly breast and prostate cancer, there is a huge nutritional component. These are hormone-driven cancers. They are driven um, by estrogens and, and uh, androgens. And the milieu that makes these uh, cancers uh, more aggressive it has to do with uh, excessive amounts of fat, especially vegetable oils in the diet, makes the makes tissues unstable and more likely undergo malignant change. Uh, a lack of vitamin D, uh, another stabilizing agent, will set the stage for malignant change. And uh, the, the hormones that uh, people ingest while eating the standard American diet, all the, uh, uh, the estrogens in cow's milk pro products and milk and cheese and ice cream and yogurt are made from the milk of large pregnant bovines. They're full of estrogens. Uh, there are estrogenic pesticides, estrogenic hormones uh, in meats and dairy products. And people are eating lots of dairy and meat and chicken. Uh, they're bathing their tissues with uh, with hormones and hormone-like molecules that promote cancer growth. Uh, the same thing with men eating uh, lots of testosterone precursors and all their red meat. And, uh, and realize also that uh, meat, animal muscle, as well as uh, dairy products, both of them st uh, pr stimulate the production of insulin-like growth factor one. This is the most potent growth-promoting substance known to biology, and people who consume lots of meat produce their own IGF-1, but if you're eating cow's milk products, you're eating preformed IGF-1. That mother cow wants to give that baby calf lots of IGF-1 to grow, which is fine if you're a baby calf, not fine if you're a woman with a breast cancer or a man with a prostate cancer. So you've got this tremendous carcinogenic drive, this cancer-producing drive from the American diet. Well, it's now um, a very exciting time because we're finding that the very same nutritional program that reverses uh, clogged arteries and lowers high blood pressure, a whole food plant-based diet, will also, uh, we're now evidence showing up that it was, seems in, in many people, especially with early prostate cancers, early breast cancers, to have the ability to pretty much stop these early cancers in their tracks um, for two reasons, of course. One, uh, almost by definition, those animal-based growth-promoting substances are immediately removed when you adopt whole food plant-based diet. Plus, the phytonutrients in the dark green leafy vegetables, sulforaphanes and uh, isothiocyanates and other ones are, are stabilized and they have an anti-cancer uh, effect that, uh, that stabilizes cell membranes. So between taking away the carcinogenic drive and, and, and uh, adding the stabilizing substances and correcting any vitamin D deficiencies, we are, there are now many instances showing up of, um, of breast and prostate cancer cancers uh, being arrested and even reversed. 
And at our very own clinic at True North Health Center in Santa Rosa, California, I was uh, privileged uh, a few months ago to have a, a woman come in, a 44-year-old woman with a lymphoma, and uh, she had lymph nodes in her groin the size of pigeon eggs. And she did a 23-day water fast, followed by a whole food, plant-based diet. And right before my eye, though, those big lymph nodes just basically shrink away. And we have the CT scans before and after uh, that show the marked reduction of the lymph nodes. And her blood count has returned to normal. And uh, granted, it's still in the early stages, but it, we have every indication that uh, that uh, a water fast followed by a whole food plant-based diet uh, was very effective in melting away this woman's lymphoma. So there's great power in these nutritional modalities to deal even with something as fearsome as cancer. And I'm very optimistic for what the future can hold with these uh, nutritional therapies for malignant disease. Dr. Michael Clapper here, and I want to thank you for visiting my channel and for watching this video. I've got a lot more content that I'm creating to answer health-related questions for you, my viewers. So please uh, subscribe to my channel down here. And if you found this video helpful, please like it and comment on it. Thanks for helping to spread the word about the power of whole food plant-based nutrition to heal both people and the planet.